I've seen other artists do style swap challenges where they do a drawing often of a character in a different style and I thought instead of doing a quick drawing that takes a few hours, I wanted to attempt a full portrait painting in a different style. I wrote a bunch of art styles or art movements on slips of paper that I've either heard of or I'm really interested in to have more of a challenge and put it in a jar and then randomly chose a different style. I was actually really happy I got surrealism. I was hoping for that style or pop art. I was really happy I didn't get abstraction because that's not my favorite style for me personally to paint and I know for sure that I really would have struggled with that especially since I decided before to do a portrait. For those who don't know and even I had to do a little research on the movement, surrealism is painting objects or a person or a landscape that is painted realistically like a photo and sort of similar to realism, but it isn't really logical or wouldn't happen in real life, which is why it's so such a creative movement. And that's a simplified definition, but I'll have a video um, in the description explaining like more into detail what the movement is. The Persistence of Memory is a really famous realism painting, and even if you don't recognize the style or nothing comes to mind when you think of it, you've probably seen that painting before. If you're still confused on what it is, it's a good example of a painting that is of that style. It's a good visual to show you what the paintings from that style look like. I was looking for inspiration on what exactly to paint for the portrait and I found a couple people who did makeup looks who drew on the constellations on their face with makeup and inspired me to do a space galaxy type of portrait. My goal was to paint a portrait of a woman floating in space kind of submerged in stars with lights and the focal point to be a star or like an orb of light floating in her hands and that's what she's looking at and that's where your eyes kind of draw to. For the sky, I wanted the light to be everywhere with different shading, sizes, and some appearing to be brighter than others with kind of a soft glow look to it. I wanted the whole painting, kind of, at least the background mostly, to be a little bit like less detail than the actual face and the constellations so it looks a little blurry. Looking back, I don't think that the actual blurriness I kind of wanted was executed that well. It might have been easier if I used oil paints, but I'm still really happy with the results of the sky. I think everything with the light and the color is what I wanted. I struggled a lot initially with how to shade the face, especially since it wasn't a normal portrait and there was going to be blue lighting which is what actually lit her face which meant that the colors would be different from normal skin. Because if I just did normal skin colors then it would have looked out of place from the background and then it would have looked like you kind of just put a sticker over the background. It wouldn't look like it was all cohesive and blended. I knew that I wanted the light source to be blue and coming from like a star or a light orb that was floating in her hand so it was below her face. I looked a lot for reference photos of blue lighting on people's faces so I could sort of find um, how it looks and how like the shadows are and the colors but I couldn't really find one that was either the right lighting that I wanted or the right color so what I did was I took a lamp and I got blue tissue paper that is in the same shade that I did the background lights mainly in and I covered the lamp with the tissue paper so instead of having bright white light come from it. It was now like a shining a blue light and I stuck the lamp under my chin and was able to look at how the colors of my skin were changed with the different lighting and that made painting the actual face a lot easier because I wasn't guessing oh what would have the skin color look like. I knew here's a reference, here's a photo, now I know what colors to use. And sometimes here's a little tip that I do that if you, because sometimes when you have two colors next to each other it kind of can be like an illusion and you can't really tell 
is this more blue or is this like darker because the colors are next to each other so you can load it into Microsoft Paint or any or Photoshop or any kind of like, software where you can take the like selector tool and you can tap a color and it shows you exactly what the color looks like by itself and that can really help with like mixing colors because you're not making it too dark and it's much clearer on like what the actual color is if you want me to do a video explaining that furthermore let me know I'm not sure if that was um, confusing or if I should go more into depth about it later on so since I couldn't find a photo of someone else with that particular lighting I wanted I was able to take my own photo and be able to use that so that's kind of a trick if there's if you really have something in mind you have a clear idea of what you want to paint but you can't really find a reference photo if you can find a way to take your own photo that's really helpful because then you're getting the exact photo of what you really want to paint I know this video took a long time and I was really trying to get on a steady schedule again. School's kind of just been crazy, but this painting ended up taking me three weeks to finish. I, didn't, I wasn't able to work on it every single day. Sometimes when you do a painting, you kind of just have to walk away from it a little bit, give yourself a mental break, because when you come back to it, it's a lot easier to see what's not proportional. So I mainly worked on it like every weekend or so for like a lot of hours, and sometimes I'd work on it in the middle of the week. Depends on what days I was able to work on it. And every single time I left a painting and did not look at it for a couple days or like just a day or even a few hours, it like really helps. And if you come back to it, I realize stuff like, oh, the nose is too high up. It needs to go more towards her lips or the eyes are like too far up and then need to push them down or they're too small. And that's like the first part, I drew the lips too small. And at one point the shoulders were too small and it's just really helpful to walk away and come back. Or even if you can't really do that, if you're in a rush to get something done, you can have an outside opinion of like asking a friend or someone to say, hey, what well, doesn't look proportional? I mean, that really helps with like making sure it looks exactly right. That's why portraits to me are always harder than animals or landscapes. Because landscapes don't always have to be perfect and like you can still tell what it is but a lot of times with portraits it's just like some little thing that's off it does it kind of takes away from the whole painting and that's why it took such a long time doing it because I want to make sure everything I painted looked really well. Akri Fine Art had a really good example of this she said you can spend like 20 hours on painting a horse it can be the most beautiful horse painting ever but if you don't care enough or if you spend like five minutes on painting the muzzle and it doesn't look good it takes away from the whole painting so that's why you shouldn't really, and I do this a lot too, sometimes I just want to rush, like, oh, I just want to finish this painting, but then there'll be like a certain part that I'm not happy with, and sometimes I'll settle and say, well, I mean, it looks good enough, but this painting, I really was like, no, I will paint over something if I don't like it, and I ended up painting over the face like five or six times, especially the nose, because that's what I personally struggle with more. I know a lot of people struggle with painting hands, but to me, that's a lot easier than painting noses. And I kept on painting over until I found, like, until it got the way that I wanted it. And that's why I'm really happy with this piece is because mostly everything, except the hair, I think I could have taken more time on painting the hair. Mostly everything is just how I, like, wanted when I was picturing how I wanted to do this first painting.
first finished this painting, I honestly wasn't sure how much I liked it. I mean, it was very, very different from anything else I've, uh, anything else that I painted. But kind of after, like, once I finished it, and I just, like, I knew, okay, this is, it looks good. This is, everything for the most part proportional except for a few things and I was like really happy with it I think every it kind of looked like how I wanted it to I mean granted it's not perfect but I'm trying not to strive for perfection as much as I normally do but once after I finished it I ended up posting it on Instagram and I got so much love from everyone people were commenting such nice things people were like messaging me and I just it felt so sweet because I mean I haven't really done this before and it was like taking a risk and I really was out of my comfort zone because honestly this was the first portrait I've ever painted in I think over five years I don't do a lot of I know I've got a request a lot to do portrait paintings but I don't do it a lot because it's a lot harder for me and I really wasn't sure how people were going to react to something that was so different from my normal like landscape photos that would look just like a photograph for this you couldn't really find a photograph that looked like this I mean there's like artwork and others like edits that look like this but not like an actual raw photograph when people were like really in like the painting it made me feel a lot more comfortable with how it turned out and with like trying new things which I do really recommend I made a video recently about art block and how important it is to not like just only stick in your comfort zone so if you haven't seen that you should definitely check it out if you're currently experiencing art block If you're interested in buying this piece, it is for sale along with many other paintings that I have on this channel. Um, it's linked down in the description, it's on Etsy. You, I mean, even if you're like not sure, I do have a bunch of other artwork that you can just check out. Um, I was thinking about making prints, like really just, like cheap prints on like paper. Let me know if anyone's interested in that or like what paintings you'd be interested in. One easy way to contact me is actually through Etsy. They have a little contact thing. So if you're interested in commissions, I'm currently working on a, a portrait commission for someone right now. But if you're interested in either commissions or prints or have any questions that's like similar to those, um, like buying art, I have an email that's in the description. But I, also through Etsy, there's all my contact information. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've really been enjoying trying new things and just trying not to stick to the same thing over and over again. I'm really going to try to have more of a weekly schedule. I really do enjoy making art videos. And if you do like this video, please let me know. I do really want to make good videos and the best that I can. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.